So let me tell you a little bit of background about the Bomb Boys here. Um, we were able to participate in something called a Student Nonproliferation Treaty Review Conference that was held in Washington, D.C., run by an organization called the Osgood Center. And the Osgood Center brings in students uh, from the United States and internationally for educational programs in foreign policy. They run a lot of model UN programs. And this is the first time they tried to do something with uh, Nonproliferation Treaty Review Conference. Everybody got to represent a country, and we were fortunate or not so fortunate, if you want to listen to their stories, to represent the United States. Uh, my committee was the Disarmament Committee. So we were focusing on three main issues. The Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, which we, the United States, is not ratifying yet. Other nuclear disarmament issues, which is basically whatever we could think of, and security assurances. So the first night of the conference, we were looking at the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. Our position was, after listening to President Obama's speech on the Prague speech in 2009, we are one to ratify the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. So we say this in the, in the committee, and all the countries that are following the US lead says, this is great, this is wonderful, we are making progress. One country in the committee, Egypt, sort of went in an opposite direction and said, we will not sign onto any resolution until Israel signs the Non-Proliferation Treaty. This is the first night of the conference, and we're already stalling about 20 minutes into discussion. So as I started going through the process, I became very friendly with the Egyptian head delegate, because in person in my room was not their head delegate, but was just another Mike or Brian or Ryan. So it was kind of talking to him to see what can we work out. So first night finishes, and I go up to the Egyptian head delegate, and I go, we need to make some progress on the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. The rest of the committee wants to move forward onto other issues, and we're willing to move, but your delegate says she will not sign on. And the Egyptian delegate goes, well, that's not true. We actually want to sign on. There was a miscommunication. So the first thing sort of we learned through this process is you needed, we needed to know what we were talking about. And what we found through our preparation was we knew our position very well. Dr. Pella helped us with the briefing book and allowed us to have our positions pretty clear on what we were talking about. Nuclear terrorism being the easiest one uh, because no one really wants <laughs> nuclear terrorism in the world and it can obviously be very detrimental to life. Um, so that was probably the easiest thing to draft up and the only person in the room that had problems with the language was Indonesia but he was a little late since he voted one way before and then the final drafting committee he had a problem with it where you couldn't change it afterwards. Um, <coughs> that was probably one of the more interesting things and then we went on to assurance of fuel supply which was probably the most contentious topic in the room um, because a lot of the nuclear weapon states thought it would be a good idea to have an international fuel bank set up so there would be a way to get nuclear material uh, for reactor fuel or other civilian technologies uh, for use but they had the non-nuclear weapon states like Indonesia and Cameroon had some issues because they don't like the fuel bank idea only because they want the technology also to enrich their own uranium which can pose a threat, and if you can enrich your own uranium, you're able to make nuclear weapons. I learned a couple things very quickly. Um, we understood the mechanics of what was trying to be accomplished very quickly, and number two, everybody wants a piece of the United States. Now, being the youngest of three, I'm able to take a beating, um, but I was not prepared for what happened, <laughs> but I adapted pretty quickly. Um, one of the first main issues um, was the first uh, thing that we were trying to tackle, which was the fissile material cutoff treaty. Now what this looks at is um, stopping the production of uranium, uranium enriched to a percentage that can be used for weapons. Um, what a lot of people want out of the FMCT um, is stopping um, the downloading of it into weapons, and they want it to involve uh, arsenal. They want to bring up current arsenals um, and say that this has to deal with arms reduction. Now, it is the United States position that this 
deals with only the production of fissile material. And a lot of people were arguing that it also deals with current arsenal supply. And so my first approach here was saying that, you know, this isn't germane to what we're talking about. This isn't relevant. Can we just focus on agreeing to stop producing fissile material? And I thought everybody would be down with that, but a lot of people were really forcing it down my throat that, you know, no, this has to do with weapons, this is about weapons, that we need to talk about weapons now. Just, again, just a few general comments on everything that I learned instead of more of the specifics. Uh, it's very, very difficult when you have uh, so many people in a room, you have so many people with different interests, and you all have one goal, and you are stubborn in a sense that you want to get what your country wants passed because you're representing your country. But at the same time, you, like Mark said, you have to give and take a little bit with, you know, can we kind of push to the edge where we, where we want this to be in order for everybody to be happy. So it's a very difficult, um, very difficult job to compromise while at the same time trying to maintain what your country holds important. It's, it's especially interesting uh, when all of us have very strong views, you know, after you go through and you read the evidence, you have very strong views on how things should be or how you want things to be. But unfortunately, that doesn't matter when you're taking a look at something like international treaties. You have to represent your country. You represent whatever country you're representing, and, and that's the end of it. You can't put your own personal views in it. And that's, that's something that's also uh, very difficult to do, but something that's definitely manageable.